In this video we are going to build a summer beach scene using 3ds Max, V-Ray and Avas Studio tools. To start with the scene first we are going to copy this editable spline and use 3ds Max compound object terrain to generate the mesh. To improve the mesh we can use the retriangulate option and then to separate different materials ID for the terrain we can use an editable mesh modifier. In polygon mode we can select the parts of the terrain that will be below the water. And set these polygons to material ID 3 and smoothing group 1. Then we can select the polygons for the beach and set them to material ID 2 and smoothing group 1. To improve the transition between the cliff and the beach we can target weld some of the vertexes. Now if we use a re-topology modifier we can generate a far better mesh with the correct materials IDs. For this modifier we can use a face count of 10,000, quad tolerance of 50 and subdivision of 2. Also we need to check auto edge smoothing groups and materials ID. Let's compute the new mesh. The new mesh look a lot better and now we can create the water with a standard 3ds max plane. Set the length and the width segments to 10 so it'll be easier to work with. If we zoom to the beach we'll see that the water does not reach the shore exactly where we want it. To fix this we can use an edit poly modifier. Select the edges that separate the beach from the water and flatten them in Z dimension. Then move the selection to world Z0 position. This way the water will stop exactly where we want it. Now to further improve this terrain we can add some more geometry by applying a turbo smooth modifier with options for materials and smoothing groups. With this done, we need only some UV map modifiers so that we can apply our textures and materials. For the terrain we can use box mapping with size of 150. For the water we can use a UV map modifier with planar mapping and size of 100. Now we can render our first preview. In this scene we have two cameras, one from the beach to the water and one from the top to the beach. Also we have V-Ray sun and sky that illuminates the scene. For the sun we have turned on the clouds option, so that we have more interesting reflections. We can assign one of the cameras to this viewport by pressing the C and selecting a camera. Let's render a preview of the current scene. Our terrain and water objects do not have any materials. We can use the ones we've prepared in the material editor. This is our material for the terrain. We are using shell material to easily switch between a basic material for the viewport and the original material for the renderer. For the water we have a similar setup. A basic material for the viewport and advanced V-Ray material for the renderer. In the preview with materials, we can see some issues with the textures. First the texture for the beach is too big and to fix that we need to modify the texture's tiling. We can use 20 by 20 so that the tiling of the sand is a lot smaller. Also the waves are not parallel to the beach and to fix that we can change the mapping orientation by rotating the gizmo of the UV map modifier. When we rotate the gizmo, we can see that our waves are rotating and they become parallel to the beach. Here, between the water and the sand we should have some foam and bigger waves. To fix that, we have a V-Ray distance texture that is blending the water material with the material for the waves. In between we are applying a gradient ramp to generate the waves. To make all this work we need to add in the V-Ray distance texture the terrain object. Immediately we can see the waves and some foam. We can preview the new materials from the other camera in our scene. Now for the terrain we need some vegetation and for this we've prepared two chaos scatter objects. The first one has a few shrubs and bushes. For detailed explanation on how to set up these objects, you can check our previous video forest trail. First we add the terrain to the scatter object and then we need a spline that defines the area for the shrubs and bushes. For that we can copy our original spline object and select the two lines that will define where the vegetation will grow. With edit invert we can select all the other splines and delete them. 
Then flatten these vertices by scaling them in the Z dimension. We need to create two additional lines that close this area. With all vertices selected first make them type corner and then weld them so we have a closed single spline. To simplify this object we can apply an optimize spline modifier and reduce the vertex count. With an edit spline modifier we can remove some of the parts where we don't need plants so that we can optimize the scene. Finally we can change the color of the object so that we can find it more easily in the viewport. Then we can add the spline to the chaos scatter object. And set the growing angle to 52 degrees in the world orientation. Now we can preview the instances. In the scatter object we have a noise map which defines the areas with or without vegetation. This way we have a more natural distribution of the instances. In addition to the shrubs and bushes we can add some trees with our second scatter object. This object has two trees and as for the first one we need to include the terrain as distribute on object. Then set the same spline that defines the area for the trees. Here we also use camera clipping to optimize the renders. We can set this option to active camera. And do the same for the other chaos scatter object. Now let's preview this scene with all plants. The trees look good but they are a little bit too dense so we can reduce the tree count by changing some parameters. Set per square meters to 15. We can increase this value a little bit more to 25. The terrain looks better now but if we want we can try a different seed value. To finish our scene we need to improve the transition between the terrain and the water. We can do that by adding some rocks with a new chaos scatter object. This new object will be distributed on the same terrain but this time we'll use an open spline instead of a closed one. First we copy the original editable spline and select only the line that we need. Then use invert selection and delete all the other splines. We need to optimize this object too. And use an edit spline modifier to delete the parts of the spline that we do not see. Finally we can select the spline into the new chaos scatter object in the include areas. And also set the far value to 20 and lower the density and the scale. Then we'll need some rocks geometry. For that we can use chaos cosmos. These rocks are relatively small. Now we can add them to the scatter object. The rocks will be distributed along the spline but for that we need to change some parameters. We need to increase the scale quite a lot. And set the count to 50 per 10 square meters. We can try to set the far value to 30. But for this scene lower is better. Here we need to change the shape to be closer to the water. Let's render a preview with the rocks. We can scale down the rocks and move them closer to the terrain. With smaller rocks we can increase the count. 
With this, the scene is almost ready to be rendered. But first let's fix this spline for this part of the terrain. Now let's preview the scene. To make the image more interesting and show the scale of the terrain we can use Chaos Cosmos to add a yacht. The yacht is not placed correctly, now it sits on top of the water. To fix that we can move it down and then position it closer to the beach. One more thing that we can improve is to create some waves and form around and behind the boat. To do that, in the top viewport we can create a closed line defining the location of the waves. In the perspective viewport we can extrude the line and then scale and reposition it. We are not going to render this object but only use the proximity of it to the water. We can create the waves exactly the same way as we did for the beach. Now we move the object to 1.5 meters above the water. Apply subdivide modifier. And on top of that add fractal noise, with strength of 0.5. We can use the spline vertices to blend the end of the waves. Let's see how this works. This is the preview of our scene and it looks good, but it requires some color correction. We can apply filmic tone map or other layers. This will require a lot of time and experience. Instead we can simply convert this scene to Ace's CG color space using Ava's studio tools and render the scene this way. With a color manager, by pressing, convert scene to Ace's CG, we can convert all the materials and all the objects in a few seconds. The tool will also set the correct settings in our renderer. Usually when we do that our scene will look a little bit darker so in advance we can change the exposure of the camera. Now we are ready to render the scene in Ace's CG color space. Also while rendering we can show different variations of the scene with different LUTs that are supplied with, a color manager, dark lookup table, bright lookup table, and the base lookup table for the correct ACES CG workflow tone map. Here you can see the final render on full screen. This is the same scene rendered in sRGB. And this is the final image rendered in ACES CG with some color corrections applied in external application. If you got so far and liked this video, please consider sharing and subscribing to our channel to be notified when we have new tutorials, products or new updates for Avis Studio Tools. Thank you for watching.